Germany, Berlin, Potsdam. It is the morning of November the 25th, 2023. A large hotel from the 1920s sits on the edge of Potsdam and Berlin, its roof looking over Lenitz Lake. Today, something out of a dark tale will happen here, at the Landhaus Adlon Hotel. It's real though, and it shows what can happen when leaders of right-wing extremist groups meet up with rich supporters. The meeting was supposed to be secret, strictly arranged only through letters, to discuss the so-called master plan for Germany. But thanks to the investigative journalism of Corrective, there was an undercover reporter secretly observing the gathering. Two men set up this meeting. The first, Gernot Mörich, is in his late 60s and has been part of the far-right scene in Germany for a long time. He used to be a dentist in Dusseldorf. The other, Hans Christian Limmer, is a big name in the restaurant business. Limmer helped make the German bakery chain Backwerk into a success and now has a share in the popular German burger place, Hans im Glück. Limmer wasn't there at the meeting, but he helped make it happen with his money. Throughout the afternoon, the hotel's dining room fills up with people. There are about two dozen of them, including four members of the far-right AFD party and no neo-Nazis. There are also middle-class people, doctors, lawyers, politicians and business owners. Murich's family also came along and four members from Germany's CDU party are also there. The meeting begins with Murich, the former dentist and now event organizer, taking the stage to introduce the day's opening speaker, Zellner. Renowned as an author and a leading figure in the European New Right, Zellner carries the weight of neo-Nazi views and an Austrian background, drawing a very dark parallel to another notorious Austrian figure from 1933. As Selner takes over, he unveils his master plan, centering on the concept of remigration, a strategy he deems crucial for the West's survival. He specifically targets three groups for removal from the country, asylum seekers, non-Germans with residency rights, and non-assimilated German citizens. In a nutshell, the discussion in the Potsdam hotel room all come down to one single dark conclusion. Individuals in Germany should be forcibly removed if their appearance, background, or how well they blend into German society doesn't align with the expectations of individuals like Zellner, even if they hold German citizenship. The plan even includes a designated destination for foreigners and refugees in North Africa, referred to as the model state. This envisioned state could reportedly accommodate up to 2 million people and would offer educational and sports opportunities. Zellner goes on to suggest that even those that advocate for refugee rights should be relocated to this location. Remarkably, Zellner's concept bears a disconcerting resemblance to the Nazis' plan in 1940 to deport 4 million Jews to the island of Madagascar. Despite Zellner's controversial proposal, there was no dissent in the room. Instead, attendees grappled with practical questions particularly the feasibility of removing individuals with valid passports. Zellner brushed off those concerns, suggesting that customized laws would create enough pressure to enforce his plan, which he admitted would take decades to implement. The meeting continues with other speakers and covers a broad spectrum of other subjects, including financing far-right groups and conducting influencer campaigns to promote their ideologies. Additionally, there are discussions about strategies to undermine the integrity of the German democratic elections. So what have we learned from this no longer secret meeting? One, there is a far-right master plan to deport German citizens because of their ethnicity. Two, there are a number of wealthy potential donors for this project. Three, there's an expert in German constitutional law who has sketched out legal methods to systematically cast doubt on democratic elections. And four, representatives of the AFD and CDU were willing to meet with radical right-wing activists and neo-Nazis. Meetings among far-right individuals are not uncommon. However, the concerning factor in this instance is the involvement of two major German political parties, the CDU and more notably the AFD. The AFD, or Alternative for Germany, demands particular attention due to its known association with right-wing extremism, a connection less commonly observed within the CDU. For those completely out of the loop, the AFD, or Alternative for Germany, 
is a far-right populist political party in Germany. Distinguished by its strong anti-immigration stance and skepticism towards climate change and the European Union. Since its establishment in 2013, the AFD has rapidly risen in popularity, now ranking as the second largest party in Germany. The news of a secret meeting has raised serious questions in the German federal court about whether the AFD party has become too extreme. This concern is particularly significant in Germany, where because of its history with the Second World War, parties can be banned if they are seen as extreme and a threat to democracy. Germany has a strong history of taking action against such parties. For instance, the federal court banned the Socialist Reich Party in 1952 and the Communist Party in 1956 because they threatened the country's democratic principles. Recently, a German court determined that the AFD's youth group can be labeled as extreme. This decision has sparked a lot of discussion about whether the AFD itself might face a ban next. Amid these developments, the AFD's leadership has attempted to distance itself from the controversy. The party insisted that no member was present at the meeting in an official capacity. AFD leader Alice Weidel described the accusations of AFD's involvement in the secret meeting as scandalous, arguing that they misrepresented her party's intentions. Und die Weiterverbreitung der unwahren Behauptung und unwahren Unterstellungen stellen einer der größten ungeheuerlichsten Medien- und Politikskandale der Bundesrepublik Deutschland dar. Sehr verehrte Damen und Herren, das sind DDR-Methoden. Es handelte sich nicht um ein AfD-Treffen, ich finde es super, dass Sie das alles jetzt ganz genau mitschreiben, sondern um eine private Begegnung von Persönlichkeiten mit unterschiedlichem Hintergrund, so auch AfD-Politikern und CDU-Politikern und Menschen ohne Parteibuch. According to Weidel, the AfD's goal is merely to enforce the law, specifically to return individuals home who have no legal right to remain in Germany. So is Weidel innocent? Let's have another look at the AfD participants of the secret meeting and whether they have links to AfD leadership, with a particular emphasis on Weidel. The most obvious link is Roland Hartwig, a former member of parliament and advisor to AfD leader Weidel. Reports suggest Hartwig appeared to be an intermediary at the meeting, meant to share its outcomes with the AfD board, though solid evidence is lacking. Then there's Arne Mörich, tasked with managing AfD social media efforts since late 2022, covering accounts for the party's parliamentary leaders. At the secret meeting, he proposed the creation of a social media agency to launch an alternative YouTube for right-wing influencers. Mürich was financially supported by the AFD, with funds coming directly from an account owned by none other than Weidel herself. Both Hartwig and Mürich's contracts were reportedly cancelled after the secret meeting was uncovered. But does this prove that Vital endorsed the contents of the secret meeting? No, it doesn't. But the connections are concerning. Not to mention, why would you hire someone with an extremist background to manage your social media? Vital may have publicly distanced herself from far-right extremism, but within the AFD, there are those that do the exact opposite. Check out this guy, Björn Höcke, the party's leader in Thüringen, and currently set to win the state elections there. Höcke constantly makes the headlines for his rhetoric that echoes the dark chapters of Germany's past. For example, he has called to repeal laws against incitement to racial hatred and Holocaust denial. And he has criticized the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin, calling it a shame for Germany. He even made a controversial comment in an interview, questioning if Hitler was absolutely evil. Furthermore, Höcke was a prominent figure in the wing, in German Der Flügel a faction within the AFD that was disbanded after being identified as extremist and incompatible with German constitutional law. But I think you're starting to get the idea. The connections between the AFD and far-right extremism, including elements of fascism and Nazi rhetoric, are widely evident across the AFD party ranks.
In response to the alarming revelations, Germany has witnessed a massive wave of public outcry, with hundreds of thousands marching in protest across the country to voice their opposition to right-wing extremism. These demonstrations have garnered broad support from the public, with a poll showing that three quarters of respondents endorsed these public protests as the appropriate reaction. Interestingly, there's been a notable shift in the public perception regarding the threat to democracy. 39% of Germans surveyed now identify right-wing extremism as the biggest danger to German democracy, marking a steep 19% increase over the past 15 months. This hasn't gone unnoticed on an EU level either. The AfD also finds itself somewhat isolated on the European political landscape. Notably, there's a lack of support from similar right-wing and Eurosceptic parties across Europe, such as Maloney's party in Italy and Le Pen's party in France. Le Pen has even said in a recent interview that the AFD are too extreme and that she can't see a way to work together. Imagine that, Le Pen, who is known for her extreme nationalist views, finds the AFD too extreme. That says it all, really. So what is the way forward? Should the AFD be banned? Here's what we think. No. Banning the AFD might make the party disappear, but the problems and complaints of its supporters would still be there. Plus, banning the party could make people trust democracy less and become even more skeptical about politics. We believe the best way to deal with the extremist parties is by beating them at the ballot box and not by making legal moves against them. So what do you think of this whole situation? Should the AFD be banned? Let us know in the comments. And if you like this type of content, please subscribe and like the video. And if you want to support the channel further, please sign up to Patreon. Until next time.